Hi, this is Derek Masiago at study.com. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through some example earth and space science questions that you might find on the Praxis Early Childhood Education Science Exam. Let's take a look. Question one, Miss Thompson's second grade class is starting a unit on the solar system and she wants to create a hands-on activity to help her students understand the concept of day and night. Which of the following activities would best help her students grasp why day and night occur on Earth? A, having students rotate a globe around a stationary flashlight representing the sun to simulate Earth's rotation. B, asking students to draw pictures of the sun and moon on opposite sides of a piece of paper. C, letting students play with the moon and star-shaped stickers in a dark room. D, showing students a video of the moon orbiting the Earth without explanation. So when we look at the, the problem, there's really two things that we are needing to answer here. We need to have a hands-on activity and students need to understand the concept of day and night. And so when we're looking at our four options, we need to pick the option that matches both of those criteria from the question. And the only one that does that is option A. Students are rotating a globe. This is the hands-on portion. And they're doing that around a stationary flashlight which actually does represent the sun. And so as they rotate the globe, they can see that you know half of the globe has day and the other half has night, or even uh, a stationary position on that rotating globe would show that it undergoes the day portion as it rotates and then the night portion as it rotates. All of the other options, B, C, and D, uh, either don't have them doing the hands-on activity or they don't properly represent the concept of day and night. Question two, in a fifth grade science lesson, students are exploring the different types of rocks and their characteristics. Which of the following best describes a rock that is formed from the cooling and solidification of magma or lava? A, metamorphic rock, B, sedimentary rock, C, igneous rock, or D, fossiliferous rock? So the question is asking us about a rock that is formed from the cooling and solidification of magma or lava. And so looking at the options, the three major rock types are metamorphic, sedimentary, and igneous. So I'm already going to cancel out D, fossiliferous. That is not going to be the answer. Now between these three rock groups, we can pretty much get the process by which the rock is formed from the name itself. So for metamorphic rock, metamorphic means like to transform. And so metamorphic rock is actually formed when an, a sedimentary rock or an igneous rock transforms into something else. In this case, it transforms into metamorphic rock. Okay, sedimentary rock is made from sediments of igneous rock. Okay, and so sediments are basically just the small little particles that break off from larger rocks. Okay, and then igneous rock reminds me of the word ignite. And when I think of ignite, I think of a fire. In this case, I'm thinking of magma or lava. And so igneous rock is the correct answer. Igneous rock is formed when magma or lava cools down and cools down into a solid. Question three. In a fourth grade class, students are discussing the impact of various weather events on the environment of different regions. The teacher wants to explain how certain events can alter the climate and bring about significant changes in weather patterns. Which weather event should the teacher describe as having the potential to carry vast amounts of moisture, influence temperature fluctuations, and lead to seasonal disturbances in a region's climate? A. Tornadoes B. Hurricanes C, heat waves, or D, droughts, okay? And so we want, um, we want something here that has the potential to carry vast amounts of moisture, influence temperature fluctuations, and lead to seasonal disturbances. So when I think of tornadoes, I'm basically just thinking of, you know, high wind speeds. That's um, pretty much what I'm thinking of with the tornado. It's basically a vortex of wind. When it comes to hurricanes, I'm thinking of basically like a tropical storm with high winds and rain. 
heat waves. I'm thinking there's basically a large uh, influence of high temps or high temperatures. And then droughts, we're basically going a long time with no rain. So when I'm looking at these options, which of these options meet the criteria? Okay. And the one that I'm going to focus on here is the potential to carry vast amounts of moisture. And the only option here that has anything to do with moisture or rain, or rain in this case, are the hurricanes. Question four. In a fifth grade science lesson, students are exploring the characteristics of different states of matter. Which of the following best describes a unique property of gases compared to solids and liquids? A. Gases have a definite shape and volume. B. Gases can be compressed much more than solids and liquids. C. Gases are not affected by temperature changes. D. Gases cannot mix with other gases without a chemical reaction. All right, so in this question, we want a unique property of gases compared to solids and liquids. So if we were to just kind of go back and look at the atomic structure of each of these states of matter, we would see that solids basically have a very structured atomic arrangement. So the, the atoms are going to be almost in a fixed position. They're going to be structured. They're going to be organized. They're not going to move from that position. When we think of a liquid, those atoms are going to be next to each other. They're going to have to be next to each other. But they can move past. They can kind of flow past one another. But they still have to be touching one another at all times. And then when we think of a gas, those particles have finally broken free from one another. And they're moving about in these random directions. Okay, so when we look at the options here, gases have definite shape and volume. That's incorrect. That would actually be the definition of a solid. Option C, gases are not affected by temperature changes. That's uh, untrue. Um, if we actually increase the temperature, those particles are actually going to move faster and um, expand or have more space between them. If we cool it down, they'll actually slow down and get closer to one another. So that's not our correct option. And then D, gases cannot mix with other gases without a chemical reaction. That's also um, false. In fact, the atmosphere that we breathe is a mixture of gases, uh, roughly 80% nitrogen, 20% uh, oxygen. And so our correct answer here is option B. Gases can be compressed much more than solids and liquids. And that is just, once again, due to the, the atom arrangement where the gases have a lot of space between their atoms and therefore they can be compressed, they can be um, pushed closer together because they have the space to do that. All right, well, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you're looking for more ways to study, check out our other videos and then also make your way over to study.com to check out our Praxis test prep courses. As a study.com member, you'll get full access to hundreds of practice problems like the ones I just walked you through, plus targeted instruction for any topics that you're still struggling with, as well as test strategy to help you maximize your score on test day. Finally, we want to hear from you. Please like and subscribe if today's video was helpful, and then let us know down below in the comments if there are any specific topics that you want us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying!